In chapter 19, we'll start looking at carboxylic acids. We need to talk a little bit more about naming with carboxylic acids than with a lot of other functional groups because a lot of the common names that we have for different organic chemicals actually come from the name of the carboxylic acid. So using the standard IUPAC naming, we would have the parent name of the molecule followed by oic acid. For example, if we had propane, so we have a three carbons and we make the carboxylic acid of that. So the carboxylic acid of propane would be propanoic acid. However, if we have a ring, like cyclohexane, and we have a carboxylic acid coming off of cyclohexane, then we would call this cyclohexane carboxylic acid. So when it's part of a ring, we use the whole name carboxylic acid rather than oic acid like we do with straight chain hydrocarbons. So again, the other thing that's important with carboxylic acids is there are a lot of common names and we need to at least be familiar with, with what the common names are. So if we go through some of the common names, if we have one carbon, this is called formic acid. And again, that's important because we can have esters So if I have this ester, I name this group first, this would be ethyl, followed by the name of the carboxylic acid with eight at the end, ethyl formate. We'll see these common names showing up in a lot of other compounds, not just in the carboxylic acids. If we have two carbons, this is called acetic acid. Most of us are familiar with that one already, otherwise called vinegar. And another very common chemical that we'll see in the lab is ethyl, naming the alcohol side of the ester first, ethyl, then naming the carboxylic acid side, acetate. So ethyl acetate. If we have three carbons, common name for this is propionic acid. The IUPAC name is back here, is propanoic acid. The common name is propionic acid. With four carbons, it's butyric acid. For butyric acid, you'll notice butyr, which is, of course, very close to butter. And this is what gives rancid butter its nasty odor and taste. And also, this is one of the components of body odor that makes us humans stink. So it's a commonly occurring chemical. Five carbons is valeric acid. And just another example of a place that you'll see that, this molecule is called valeronitrile. So when we start looking at the derivatives of carboxylic acids, a lot of them are named for the common names of the parent carboxylic acid. Still a few more things on naming. Of course, hopefully by now you realize that one of the most important groups that we're ever going to see in organic chemistry is the benzene ring. So a carboxylic acid made from the benzene ring, of course, ought to be quite important as well. So this is benzoic acid. Now we also in addition to naming things like esters and nitriles, we can name metal salts of the acids. So if I take benzoic acid and make, this is called the carboxylate anion. Okay, a carboxylate is a generic term for any carboxylic acid that's lost its proton. The specific one then for this would be benzoate. If we add a sodium then, to balance the charge, I would have sodium benzoate, which is a very common preservative. You'll see that in a lot of foods, sodium benzoate. One of the properties of, of many different 
One of the interesting properties of functional groups often is the boiling point and how boiling points, of course, are related to intermolecular forces. So if I look at a series of boiling points that includes uh, carboxylic acids, we can learn something about what's happening with intermolecular forces. So this is another place I would challenge you to pause the recording and see if you can explain at least the first three why they have such different boiling points when the molecular weights of these molecules are all very similar. So hopefully you would remember that boiling points are related to intermolecular forces. So if I look at what kind of intermolecular forces butane would have, the only intermolecular force that's available here are van der Waals forces. If I step up to propanol, I now have van der Waals forces as well as dipole-dipole interactions. I keep going up to propanol, I have van der Waals forces. I still have dipole-dipole interactions. For example, the carbon-oxygen bond is polar, but I also have hydrogen bonding. The OH causes hydrogen bonding. So then I get up to the carboxylic acid, and I know that I've got van der Waals forces, I've got dipole-dipole forces, carbon-oxygen bonds, and I've got hydrogen bonding between the OHs. So why is it that this is still 21 degrees higher boiling, which means that it has quite a bit stronger intermolecular forces even than propanol? And the reason for this is can be seen if you draw two carboxylic acids nearby each other, because here I've got a carbonyl oxygen from one carboxylic acid that can hydrogen bond to the proton from another carboxylic acid, while I have a second hydrogen bond forming between the other carbonyl and OH. So what we actually have here is we have two hydrogen bonds in carboxylic acids between molecules instead of just one they would have between alcohols.